Hi, I'm up to a lot today. As you can see this week, I've been focusing on sewing. So what's this project that I have here? This here is one of those like hanging seats that you would get. I got mine from Five Below. And it's made of like, you know, some very thin poly material. And as expected when I bought it, I hung it in my basement, used a bungee cord and everything, and it busted right away. And that was just with my youngest using it. And this is about a couple years old, so he was probably like 11 when he used it. So he's now 13, and I still think it's a neat thing to have just because I have two boys with sensory issues, and they love things that, you know, things like this that will you know, cover them, but um, they can hang and spin in. So I was looking for, I was like, what do I have that would be stronger that could probably hold a 13, 16 year old? Well, I have these old curtains, all right? And I'll just lift over this side so you can see. They're like beige, but they also have little monkeys and palm trees. My younger son used to use these in his room and then they he kind of painted his room and got too old for them. So I thought, well... I can recycle them to make a new version of this. So in order to make my pattern, I obviously cut apart the old um, seat into, a, and I made it into a pattern. But as I see here, I have it laid out on fabric that I ironed. I ironed the fabric because it makes it easier to work with it. Um, so here I have the circle. But what I'm thinking here, this piece, yes, I will keep it here. And I know this part originally, I think, was folded over to hold, like, uh, this where you would attach it and stuff like that. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to try to figure out another way to do that. Might make, like, strips or something to reinforce this. Still thinking, like, besides how I sew it, do I need to like add some reinforcement to this? Now this fabric actually already has a lining behind it. So the fabric itself is, is reinforced, but I need to make sure that it doesn't rip again. So, but again, another issue I have here is when I'm laying out the pattern, this doesn't exactly all fit right here. So what I'm thinking, because I just have four pieces. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not fitting on the pattern. I'm thinking I might have to cut this little piece off. Like kind of chalk here where this ends. And where I'm going to cut. And what I'm going to do is cut another piece. So I can maybe, you know, cut it, you know, use it here or something like that. That's just my thought. I may go and do that now and just show you what I mean before I go and cut all my pieces for this. All right, I cut those two pieces and I actually got them to fit on there. What I like about this is it now means I can use one whole curtain panel to make this, um, to make this, you know, hanging seat or whatever. So I'll have the semi, the circle here with a little bit of white that will be on all of the white or beige or whatever it is. And then I might use like some of the scrap or um, uh, whatever's left over to help me reinforce it. Because I know here it has like, you know, bias tape or whatever here to help reinforce it. But I don't know if I'll necessarily need it now that I'm using a more canvas like material. But it's now six pieces for the pattern. Hopefully I'll remember what goes where and how. But um I'm going to now chalk and cut out my pattern. I decided to pin up the circle part just to make it easier for me to um, chalk it. So I've cut most of the pieces out. I'm just not cutting the, I'm cutting these out two at a time just so I can assemble them and know which goes where. So it took me a while to remember how this was supposed to get back together. So as you see, I've kind of made these pieces flush. And my idea is to zigzag stitch up and down. And then I have this piece. Hold on. Oof. This piece right here, which I've kind of um, folded in half, as you can see. And I'm going to put that 
the idea is to put it over this and then zigzag stitch it on or um, I think more zigzag stitch because that really keeps things into place. And then um, I'm going to fold it up over to try to get as much as I can on the other side. And I may have to just get another piece out of there to really secure that in. And I can already tell for this part right here, this is more the edging. And I didn't um, hem it. Only part of it has like already pre-hemmed from when it was curtains. I do think that I might need to buy some bias tape and um, put that together like that or put a piece, get a piece over, fold it over to um, just make it look finished. So I finished one side. As you see here, this is where I attached the two pieces and I took a piece of fabric like I said I would to kind of reinforce that and make it look a little bit cleaner. And then I cut um, pieces of fabric to fix the edging here and to fix the edging here. Just keep in mind, all I had to do with that was cut it, you know, basically like an inch and a half of fabric, folded it in with each other ironed it using the iron is very important and then I just took that piece over here that way I didn't have to keep hemming um, you understand so now what I'm going to do is take this portion and attach it to the circle part literally won't believe this I started the whole thing was talking and it wasn't even recording okay so you can actually see if I zoom it's going to stop nope it doesn't when I zoom out, you can see that it's starting to look like a seat, okay? Just like the pattern that I had, it looks like that, but hopefully this one will hold up better. So far, I have put on the sides to the bottom. Remember yesterday, I showed you this, and I put those in on each side, and then there was enough room to put on the back piece, so that is in there. All right, but now I've also started working on the edging right here. As you see, I'm starting to add the edging. I cut like just long strips of two uh, inch by just long, long strips. And then I folded it in, ironed it, folded it in again. And that's what I'm using for my edging. So I'm going to be working on that next. And then for the bottom, I wanna cut like a piece of felt circle and another of the monkey surfing fabric and put that on the bottom to finish it off and then I'm gonna add edging to that. Let me get that far and come back and tell you how I'm gonna finish this all up. Okay, so here I have done, you can see the piping all the way around. Um, I've done it all the way around. I didn't do it here, but I think I'm gonna go back and do it here because I was afraid it was gonna to be too thick for my needle, but on the other side, it worked just fine. So I'm gonna go back and fix that, but it's gone all the way around, even around the top and everything, just folded it in a little bit here. This seems like a hard project, but as long as you adhere to the pattern, it is actually not too bad and is coming out really nice. I did add felt to the bottom to give it a little more structure. And then I cut out another piece just like what's on inside and I'm gonna affix it to the bottom and then I'll add piping there. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna work on next, show you what that will look like when it's done. And then I just have to kind of uh, show you how I'm going to sew kind of like the loop where I'm going to put what's um, uh, the, like bungee cord and stuff like that to fix it to make it hanging but right now it feels so much more durable than the other and I think with like it's sewn and then you've got the piping on top of that hopefully that keeps it from coming undone and can hold the weight of at least a small teenager so um so far so good so here's the bottom all completed I think it looks really good now mind you there's one two three, four, five layers right here. One of them is heavy felt, and then it's all also encased in this. So there's a bunch of zigzag stitches and then the piping. Now the next part is I have to make this so it can hang from wherever, in my basement in this case. I've already marked the other side with a chalk mark to fold it over. 
what I'm going to do is I am going to sew across this bottom, uh, probably all the way, no, I can't sew it all the way up. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's been a long day for me. I'm gonna sew it across the bottom here. Probably a, a single and a zigzag just to keep it in place. Then I have this piece that I cut from the curtain. It's one of the hemmed end pieces. It's pretty solid. I am probably going to take this and put it all the way around. And I'll probably actually do it. Uh, it looks like I'll only do it once. I would love to be able to do it twice, but I need to have enough room to put something in here. So I'm probably going to just really zigzag it really well to make sure it stays there. Um, but I'm going to put this all the way around to just kind of give it some reinforcement for holding it into place. So it is done. All the piping is done all around all the side. And I have the top here. As you see, I put in two, I sewed this here. I did a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch and a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch up here. But then I affixed these and I used a zigzag stitch to attach them. The hope is that it keeps it up and safe and working. Now, all I need to do next is hang this up and try it out. Hi, uh, here's the completed seat. Um, as you see, we um, use, <laughs> we actually used an old dog leash because it has like a really thick, sturdy um, material that it's made of. And we hung it up onto our um, bar, that our, our pull-up bar that we installed into our basement. and. Um, it is built more for a child. It really is. But my older kids do fit in it. Um, I might have to reinforce some of the bottom of it. But it is more like a sensory chair. It more hugs you when you're in it. Um, my older kids say that's actually a good thing and they like that. And my youngest just likes to sit in it and spin around while he's playing video games. But all in all, I think it was a successful build.